Welcome to MedCrime and in today's tutorial we shall be looking at spina bifida. Spina bifida is a developmental congenital disorder that is caused by incomplete closing of the embryonic neurotube or the spinal column. Some of the vertebral bones underlying the spinal cord are not fully formed and remain unfused and open. Therefore, a large opening may allow the spinal cord to protrude and there may or may not be a fluid filled sac surrounding the spinal cord. The most common location for development of spina bifida is usually the lumbar region and the sacral region. Spina bifida can be classified into four types, that is spina bifida occulta, meningocele, lipomyelomeningocele, and myelomeningocele. Let's start with spina bifida occulta. Spina bifida occulta is the mildest form of spina bifida, where the vertebral splits are too small to allow any protrusion of the spinal cord or the meninges. The skin at the side of the lesion may be normal or may have some hair or some dimpling like in this image. This spina bifida occulta is usually asymptomatic and is diagnosed incidentally during routine x-ray imaging. The next type of spina bifida is meningocele. Meningocele is the least common type and the vertebra usually develops normally but the meninges are forced into the gaps of the vertebral column. The nerve tissue is not usually damaged and therefore the patient with meningocele do not suffer any related symptom. The next type of spina bifida is lipomyelomeningocele. A lipomyelomeningocele is a form of spina bifida where the outer part of the vertebra have not completely closed leaving an opening and some abnormal fatty tissues pushes through this opening and may cause a compression of the spinal nerves. Then lastly we have myelomeningocele. Myelomeningocele can be defined as a type of spina bifida where the meninges and the spinal cord itself is bulging out. So these are type that results with more severe complications and the infused portion of the spinal column allows the spinal cord to protrude through this opening. The meningeal membranes that cover the spinal cord form a sac in closing the spinal element. And we have another severe form of myelomeningocele known as myeloschisis or myelocele. A myeloschisis, is, like we have said, is the most severe form of myelomeningocele, and the area that is usually involved is represented by a flattened, flat like mass of nerve tissue with no any underlying membrane, predisposing these patients to developing meningitis. There is usually cases of paralysis and loss of sensation in myeloschisis to the level of the spinal cord where these deformities. What are the risk factors or the causes of spina bifida? All the causes of spina bifida are not really known, but they are either genetic, environmental, or nutrition in nature. And the implicated causes are the folic acid deficiencies in pregnant mothers. Maternal diabetes has also been associated with an increased incidence of development of caudal regression syndromes. And also maternal exposure to some medications which interfere with body's ability to utilize folate and folic acid, for example, carbamazepine and valproate, can predispose then born babies to developing spina bifida. What are the common features or clinical pictures of children who have spina bifida? Babies with spina bifida will have leg weakness and paralysis. Some orthopedic deformities, for example, club foot, congenital hip dislocations, scoliosis, foot deformities, and also they have blood and bowel loss of control because of the damage of the nerves. Pressure sores and skin irritations, we may be having also trophic skin changes and abnormal eye movements. A physical and neurological examination needs to be done in babies who are born with features of spina bifida. And this includes observation of spontaneous activities, extent of muscle weakness and paralysis, response to sensation stimuli, deep tendon reflexes and an, and an anocutaneous reflex known as an wink. In many of the infants, the neurological findings will improve during the first 3 days or 72 hours of life and the examination should be interpreted to define the baseline neuropathology of the individual patient. Therefore, we need to identify the level of the spinal cord neurologic deficit 
Associated spinal cord abnormalities suggest the split cord malformations and signs of hydrocephalus because it's one of the commonest complications of spina bifida. Evidence of brainstem compression from the Chiari 2 malformation. So the newborn should also be evaluated for associated abnormalities in order for us to make an appropriate decision regarding their treatment. Spina bifida can be diagnosed during pregnancy or after the baby is born. And in prenatal diagnosis, we do using uh, a serum alpha fetoprotein screening where we do a maternal alpha fetoprotein screening of serum alpha fetoprotein levels and maternal serum alpha fetoprotein screening for neurotube defect is performed in the second trimester of pregnancy between 15 and 20 weeks gestation and remember an alpha fetoprotein is a protein that is made by unborn babies this alpha fetoprotein crosses the baby through the placenta to the mother if there are high levels of alpha fetoprotein in the mother's blood this might mean that the baby has a spina bifida and of important to note is that the alpha fetoprotein screening is primarily intended to identify or detect open myelomeningocele and anencephalis because it does not really detect skin covered lesions for example spina bifida occulta another form of diagnostic tool or examination is an ultrasound scan Myelomeningocele can be detected before the 12th postmenstrual week by noting some irregularities in the bony spine or a bulging within the posterior contour of the fetal back. After the 12th postmenstrual week, sonographic or ultrasound fetal markers for open neurotube defects will include the lemon sign and the banana sign. A lemon sign is a concave shape of the frontal calvarium and the banana sign is a posterior convexity of the cerebellum in the presence of spina bifida. Another type of uh, diagnostic tool that we can do is amniocentesis, which is test to take small samples of amniotic fluid from the mother's womb. And if this fluid has a higher than average level of alpha fetoprotein, then the baby might have spina bifida. Lastly, we can do a fetal MRI scan. Spina bifida occulta may not be diagnosed until late childhood age or adulthood or even it may not be diagnosed at all because it's most commonly asymptomatic in nature. Then how do we manage patients who have spina bifida? These are the patients who will be put on antibiotic prophylaxis with broad spectrum antibiotics to reduce the risk of developing central nervous system infections. And the main mode of management is surgical closure, where the back lesion should be surgically closed within the first 72 hours after birth. Lastly, what are the complications associated with spina bifida? Spina bifida can be associated with hydrocephalus, shunt malfunction, teethered cold, the Chiari 2 malformation, also known as Arnold Chiari malformation type 2. Hydromyelia, where there is accumulation of fluid in the central canal of the spinal cord. Cognitive development in these babies. Urinary tract complication because of the compromise of the nervous supply. Urinary tract complication because of compromise of the nerve supply to the urinary tract system. Bowel complications and fecal incontinence and also orthopedic problems. 